Hello and welcome to the 3-Minute Quran Study, the place where we don't shy away from ancient texts. An anonymous Syriac chronicle is often used as evidence for the veracity of the Islamic narrative. Written by an historian monk from southern Iraq during the early years of the 670s, the so-called Chronicle Menora seems to agree with some of the Islamic legends. It reads, Truly, the victory of the sons of Ishmael who beat and overcame these two powerful kingdoms was God's victory who up until that point did not allow them to take control of Constantinople. That is why this victory has to be attributed to God and not to the Hagarenes. What the Dome of Abraham is, we have not found anything about. But we know that the blessed Abraham, who was rich and wanted to get away from the greed of the Canaanites, preferred to live in faraway places and in the wide open desert. And as is customary for the inhabitants of tents, he built this place in order to worship God and to sacrifice to him. Whichever place it may have been that exists today, it got its name from him. The memory of the place has survived with that of his house. The Hagarines don't do anything novel when they praise God in this place because they maintain the old custom, as it behooves the people who offer reverence to the ancestors of their race. Hazor, which scripture calls the head of all kingdoms, belongs to the Hagarines. It is called Medina after the name of Madian, the fourth son of Abraham, the one he had of Zetua. It is also called Yatrib. The author doesn't seem to know a lot about the religion of the Arabs other than that they revere Abraham, something he as a Christian finds commendable. He certainly hasn't heard anything about a new religion among the Arabs. After that, the anonymous monk provides some biblical associations when he extensively refers to the book of Genesis wherein we learn about Abraham leaving his home and building an altar in the land of Canaan. From there he moved eastwards beyond Bethel, but west of Ai, where he built a second altar. At that point, the chronicle becomes quite confused. It mentions Hazor, belonging to the Arabs. According to the book of Joshua, the city of Hazor lies in the north of Canaan, far away from the city of Medina, with which it is equated. It is inconceivable that the Christian author wouldn't have known where Hazor lies, particularly since he quoted Joshua 11.10, where it says that Hazor was the head of all those kingdoms. The quote is right from the passage where we also find that location of Hazor. Unless the city of Medina has since moved more than 600 miles to the south, we are looking at yet another interpolation which was likely added during the second half of the 8th century. The original writer didn't know where the Arab places of worship were. While he speculated along the lines of biblical traditions, a later copyist did know more and he added the names Medina and Yatrib. One thing to note is that even the later copyist apparently was not aware of the city of Mecca or any significance it may have had for the Arabs. Given the importance which Mecca and the Kaaba hold in modern Islam, one would think that Mecca would be the first city to spring to mind. Not so for our interpolator. He was well enough informed to know about Medina and its Arabic name Yatrib. Still, he apparently didn't know about Mecca. A strong indication that even by the middle of the 8th century, Mecca did not play an important role for the Arabs. So as it turns out, instead of supporting the Islamic narrative, the anonymous Syriac Chronicle provides us with more evidence against the very same Islamic narrative. In the next episode, we will look at yet another text which supposedly supports the Muslim legends. Until then, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.